this, this is Wendy. It's also our classroom. This is our classroom. And 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 this is our classroom. Today we're gonna to be talking about homeschool, how we do it, what curriculum we use, questions we've had people ask us, do we like it, are we enjoying it, are our kids actually learning anything, and what do we do when we are on the road? We're the Farnsworths, John, Kristen, Aaron, Ethan, Chloe, and Cinder. We are currently exploring the East Coast while John takes on his first travel nurse assignment, and we're so glad you're here. What are we doing, kids? We're going on a field trip. Oh, we should have had a field trip song. There's got to be something you can oh, yeah. find on YouTube. Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend. No way! Field we are trip. going on a two-day field trip. Two days. What school do overnight. you know does an overnight field trip? The Farnsworth Academy. <laughs> So where are we going? We are on our way to Philadelphia. What have we been studying in school this last week, kids? Dinosaurs! Dinosaurs, and what else? George Washington. George Washington. Benjamin and Benjamin Franklin. And Benjamin Franklin. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud they remember. <laughs> we were studying dinosaurs at the time and we got to go to the Academy of Natural Sciences in downtown Philadelphia and see a T-Rex full skeleton. Conductor, you're right. The conductor from Dinosaur Train. Because I can tailor their education, I looked up ahead of time to see what full skeletons they had on display, and we studied those specific dinosaurs. So when we got to the museum, they were able to say, "Oh, wow! I like learned about this one," and it was a really great experience. Dinosaurs weren't the only thing we got to learn about. The kids got to hold all kinds of icky bugs, and we walked through a really cool butterfly exhibit where the butterflies literally flew all around us. What we usually do when we're on the road is just follow the curriculum in our workbooks for reading, language arts, and math. And then we substitute our history and science for the activity that we're doing that day. The curriculum we're using is called Easy Peasy All-in-One Homeschool. And I know it sounds funny, but it really is a great program. If you'd like to check it out, you could click on the link below. And it is 100% free if you just want to be online. We knew that our kids needed more than just to be online and that, you know, traveling in Wendy here, we weren't always going to have great service. So we opted to buy the, the materials, the books. Chloe is in what's called Getting Ready. Then we have our second grader. And then we also have our oldest, Aaron. He is in fourth grade. 
The core curriculum consists of math, reading, writing, and language arts. And those subjects are all done in the morning individually by each kid. They have their own books of study for those in their level, and each kid works on those. We usually do that from nine to 11 every morning. Then we usually have a brain break. Sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer if mama needs a longer break kind of like a recess and a little reset. Then they come back in and we do all in one homeschool. So it's a, like a one room schoolhouse program. They do history and science every day along with Bible. Bible we usually save for lunch and sometimes we forget, but we're trying to get better at it. And then they also have um, subjects that are kind of thrown in and out. They have computer lab, they'll have art or they'll have music and those are kind of just interwoven. The cool thing about the one room style is that I have control over what we are studying. They give us four different options of type studies to follow and then you can rotate those out every year. You'll choose a different program. This year, because we're in the Northeast, I chose early American history and zoology. How cool is it that I get to choose what we get to do for history and for science? We have learned all about our founding fathers of the country, and we've been able to go see things that the kids are actually studying and make them come to life, which has been amazing. Right now, they're studying Valley Forge, and we're planning a trip to go see Valley Forge next month. I'm so excited. lesson we are downtown in Old City Philadelphia it is a National Park Service so we get to stamp our book and the, uh, the kids and John are inside right now stamping their books and we are going to be working on our Junior Ranger program instead of doing school today it's that's what the Liberty Bell would sound like This is Benjamin Franklin Court. Behind me are the outlines of the houses and things, that he, houses and stables specifically they used to live in. Um, it's really tall, taller than I would imagine. Postcards on their way. great thing is that John and I have been able to do this together. I do a lot of the schooling, especially when he is at work, but when he is home, man, he is he is on task with the kids. Like it goes so much better when there's both of us there because you know, there's not as much as the mom, I need to show you this. Mom, I need help with this. How do you do this? Mom, 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 mom. Um, that having John there to help and he's also got a little bit deeper level of patience than sometimes I have, so he does really well with working with the kids. We're still working out some kinks. I think everybody is gonna go through some growing pains as we figure out how to transition out of public school and into homeschool. The kids uh, generally seem to enjoy it. There have been several days that somebody ends up in tears, and those days are hard. I'm not gonna lie, those days are hard. 
but I think they're normal. I think it's part of the process of learning how we learn and me figuring out what works and what doesn't work and something that works for Ethan might not work for Aaron and that's okay and that's part of the exciting thing of homeschooling them is that I really get to know them. Overall, I think this has been a fantastic experience so far. We are six weeks into our homeschool program and we started a little early on purpose so that we can take off a chunk of time in between our contracts here at the end of October. We decided to go a little bit off route. We are in Delaware, which we didn't even know we were gonna get to drive through Delaware. And we saw this really cool bridge that crosses the Delaware River. So we're actually gonna cross into New Jersey and then come back to Delaware on our way back to Maryland. Yeah, we said if it's free, we're going. If there's no toll, we're going. So, we no did! Toll. There's, there's no toll. Hey, it's fine. Hey! Okay, it's not a toll, it's not a toll way, toll road on, on the, the way, way to there. New Jersey. But on the way to Delaware, it's a toll road. <laughs> People have asked me if my kids have to take certain standardized tests or anything, and the answer is no. Our permanent address is in the state of Kansas, so we follow Kansas state law, and we are officially known as the, the Farnsworth Academy. We are a non-accredited private school, and so I could actually even issue a diploma if my kids went all the way through to the end of high school, and colleges would recognize that as a high school diploma without ever taking a GED test. Now the standardized tests, they are not required to take the standardized tests either. The only requirement that I have is to prove that they have been in school for 180 days of the year. Hey moms and dads, if you're a homeschooler, comment below because we wanna cheer you on because homeschooling is no joke. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Hope you've enjoyed learning all about homeschool and road school and how we do it. We love you. We're so glad that you're here. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that button and ring the bell so you can get notifications and join us next week for another great video.